9.2 example one, basically we're going to analyze this function. Uh, and it is a rational function because there is that polynomial in the denominator there. Um, right off the bat, many students will look at this and they'll immediately say, okay, x minus 3 is in the denominator. So my non-permissible value is that x cannot be equal to positive 3. And that's very valid. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, what I would recommend is that as soon as you see that it's irrational, make sure it's in factored form. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor the quadratic in the numerator and rewrite it as x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now, that does not change the fact that x cannot be equal to positive 3. There's nothing, you know, there's no problem there. So that is a non-permissible value. What the next part of the question wants us to do is analyze the behavior near its non-permissible value. Now, what we're going to do to, to graph this, and I'm going to really hammer home this idea that I am not saying these are the same function. But I am going to say that f of x looks like g of x, and I am going to write g of x as the simplified version of f of x. And when I say simplified, I just mean that the factor in the numerator and the denominator cancels, right? x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. So it's going to look like the function g of x, which is x minus 2. The problem, though, and I'm going to put this underneath, is that x still can't be equal to positive 3. And the reason for that is because g of x came from simplifying that f of x fraction. So when I do put this in, or if I were to draw this, I should say, that's a weird way of saying that. When I draw the graph of x minus 2, I'm going to draw g of x in red here. x minus 2 has a slope of positive 1, a y-intercept of negative 2. So it looks something like this. That's g of x. Now, what's really important is that f of x, which I'm going to do in blue because I wrote it in blue up here, looks exactly the same except for this point right here. Now, on g of x, I'm going to put it here, that if I took the function g and evaluated it at 3, I would get 3 minus 2, not 1, sorry. I get that g of 3 is equal to 1. That means that the point 3 comma 1 exists on g of x. Now, remember x can't be equal to 3. That's definitely true. But if we look at the graph of g of x without that restriction, 3 comma 1 would exist there. Now, what that means is that f of x looks the same, except we would have to put an open dot around that 3 comma 1. And the idea behind that is in the graph of f of x or the function or, you know, the equation of f of x, if I put 3 in, and I'm going to write it over here, that f of 3 is equal to 3 minus 3 times 3 minus 2 divided by 3 minus 3. And I get that f of 3 is equal to 0 times 1 over 0. Now, a lot of students will look at this and say, oh, well, that's no problem. I'll just cancel these zeros out. And, and as a calculus and math teacher, that makes me shudder a little bit because you cannot divide by 0. 0 over 0 is not always the same thing. And this is one of those lessons where I, I appreciate that we need this in 30-1, but to really, really get into what's happening at those points of discontinuities, we really need something called the limit process. Um, which is where we would put in values that are closer and closer and closer to 3 and see what our function does. For us in 30-1, using the simplified form, this g of x, is enough for us to identify, and I'm gonna, this is about f of x here, that f of x has a point of discontinuity at, we now know the entire point, it's at 3 comma 1. Now, it says analyze its behavior near its point of discontinuity. That would be something like looking, and basically, I'm going to write the statement, and we'll look at it um, using Desmos, is as x approaches 3, f of x approaches, in this case, positive 1. And that's a really, really important consideration, that we can't actually put 3 in. Right? Putting 3 causes us to divide by 0, but as x gets closer and closer to 3, the value of x gets closer and closer to 1, and I'm going to show you that using your graphing calculator. All right, as you might expect, to do that on your graphing calculator, you need your graphing calculator, and we're going to type in the function. Now, one of the nice things about using our graphing calculator is that there's no need to factor. And, you know, this is important that don't blindly just use your calculator every time you run into a question, but also try not to do a lot of duplication of effort. You don't need to factor that, but what you do need to do, um, or maybe not need to do, but you should do, um, is put your numerator and your denominator in separate brackets, or they're in their own brackets. And that's going to make sure there's no little kind of order of operations problems in our calculator. So going back to the original form of the question, the numerator was x squared minus 5x plus 6. The denominator, which gets its own bracket, was x minus 3. Now, I'm going to go to Zoom Standard, 
And what it's going to give us is the basically the graph that I drew in the notes, right? Hopefully I got it right. And it's pretty reasonably the same. And I want to show you what happens when I try to put in three. When I put in three, the, the calculator just kind of gives up and it, and it says that Y is blank. And, you know, it, it never really does a good job of showing the point of discontinuity. You need a more advanced program for that. Um, so what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to find some way on the calculator to kind of maybe prove what we just did algebraically. And the best way to do that by far is to go to our window, but we have to make sure that we're looking at the same thing. So I'm going to go to my second window, which is the table setup, and I just want you to make sure that your independent is on ask. That's going to allow us to put in whatever values we want for X instead of just being at the mercy of the calculator and kind of choosing what we put in there. Okay, so if your independent is on ask, then we're going to go to our table of values, so that second graph. And then what I'm going to do, and it doesn't matter how close you start with, uh, but I'm going to do a, a kind of reasonable interval, I would say. So I'm going to look at 2, then 2.5, then 2.9, then maybe 2.99. Let's keep 3 there. And then I'll look at, and really what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make my table of values approach 3. So the values of X are getting closer and closer to three. I'm going to do that on the other side with 3.01, 3.1, and, you know, 3.5 and four, if you want. You don't even really need those, but that's okay. And what we see happening, I hope we see happening, is that as X gets closer and closer to three, the value of Y gets closer and closer to positive one. And if that isn't enough to believe, that's fine. You can keep going. So I'm going to keep on putting numbers that are closer and closer to three, um, until maybe you kind of get fed up. And then what you can do is just kind of keep writing nines. And what your calculator will do at some point is say, oh, that's pretty much just three. And I can't put three in. So you do have to be a little bit careful. I would recommend going to maybe four decimal places, or I guess six maybe I'll put in. Um, and that actually gave me a value that was close enough that the calculator rounded it up to the point of discontinuity. So now we see that three comma one exists on there. Now there is another option. The other technique you can do is you can put the simplified function in for y2. And my simplified function was x minus 2. Now when I graph this, we're going to see that the red line looks the same, except for one little, little difference, which is when I hit trace 3 on my blue graph, it doesn't exist. Remember, that's a point of discontinuity. But if I hit trace and I change what function I'm looking at, I can put 3 in there. And I see that 3 comma 1 is where my point of discontinuity occurs. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Because um, I'd like to see, sometimes what these graphing calculators will do is they'll introduce a gap when it's a close enough window setting, but it looks like that's not happening, which is kind of annoying. So a couple different ways of finding out where that point of discontinuity occurs. I think the best bet by far is what I showed in the notes, which is to simplify your function and then input that X value where you think the point of discontinuity occurs.